Imagine you're flying a jet fighter when the engine suddenly stalls. Well, that's just great, isn't it? Here you are zooming along at maybe 2,000 kilometers per hour and your plane has chosen this exact moment to break down. What do you do? Eject and use your parachute to glide safely to the ground? With luck, you'll survive the experience and be able to fly again in the future. Welcome to another episode of High Technology. Join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. When it comes to saving lives, parachutes are among the simplest and most effective of inventions. How exactly do they work? Let's take a closer look. A parachute works by using air to create a structured wing that allows the user to glide to the ground. Parachutes are controlled by pulling on steering lines which change the shape of the wing and allow the user to turn or change their rate of descent. Modern parachutes are rectangular, which gives skydivers more control over their descent than was possible with round parachutes. Today, skydivers can turn, change their rate of descent, flatten their glide, and make more accurate landings than ever before. Traditionally, parachutes were circular and as as they fell, they resembled jellyfish due to their dangling suspension lines. As they descended, the air was able to leave through vent holes which helped them keep from shaking, and their lines enabled relatively simple steering. Modern parachutes are typically rectangular. They have a number of cells that expand when air rams into them, creating a fairly rigid, curved airfoil wing that is much easier to steer and control than a parachute in the form of a dome. Military paratroopers still frequently utilize round chutes because they are effective for dropping large groups of people in a short space at low altitudes. Paratroopers are only seeking to reach the ground as soon as possible, not to demonstrate their skydiving prowess. The ram air design is now mostly universally used by recreational divers who view circular chutes as antiquated. If you've ever seen a parachute spread out on the ground, you'll know it has a lot of separate parts and it can be a very tricky thing to pack back into its container so it opens correctly next time. The main parts of a parachute include the pilot chute, bridle, apex or top vent, canopy, skirt, suspension lines, links, risers, control lines, harness, and container. The pilot chute is a small parachute that opens the large main parachute. The bridle connects the pilot chute to the main chute. The apex or top vent allows a slow escape of air from the top of the main chute, which prevents air from leaking out of the sides of the canopy and rocking the parachute wildly as it falls. The canopy is the main part of the parachute and the skirt is the lower part of the canopy. The suspension line spread the weight of the parachutist evenly across the canopy. The links connect the suspension lines to the risers which are connected to the harness. The control lines allow the parachutist to steer and brake the parachute. The harness is worn by the parachutist and the container holds the packed up parachute and all its bits and pieces. They are semi-rigid wings parachutes. This implies that they are essentially solid while in flight. In fact, they are so solid that skydivers can bump their parachute against another skydivers. They can even stroll over a canopy stop in a field of study known as CRW or canopy related work. A parachute's front view reveals that it's divided into either 7 or 9 cells. The entire parachute is essentially made up of numerous individual chambers that each catch air and combine to form the full wing. Each cell has an open front, which is where air enters. Air is driven in by the front and trapped inside the cells as the parachute flies ahead, giving it its shape. For this reason, modern parachutes are sometimes known as ram air parachutes. Getting a parachute parachute to open properly is the first step in successfully piloting one. The cells of the parachute are pointed forward when it is packed into its container. Air is permitted to rush in as soon as the parachute opens. The design of the parachute ensures that it will always fly front first, however minute variations in packing can lead to off-heading openings. Lines join the parachute to their containers. These are essentially extremely durable strings that are attached in various locations over the underside of the parachute. The parachute steering lines are located at the back. They have toggles attached to them that provide handles for the skydiver to grab for simple control. Their function is to make it possible for the skydiver to pull down on either one or both sides to turn the parachute. The parachute turns right when the right steering toggle is pulled. It turns left when you tug on the left. 
When both toggles are pulled together, the canopy flattens out and is forced to slow down its speed of drop. The parachute's natural design enables it to descend at a reasonable speed. Skydivers frequently describe the under canopy portion of a skydive as a peaceful glide through the air while flying a parachute, which makes the experience quite soothing. That is, of course, assuming that we aren't modifying the real flying characteristics in any way. The parachute descends a little more quickly when a skydiver uses the toggles to pull down on the steering wires and turn. Advanced parachute operators employ a maneuver term swooping to accelerate their rate of fall and produce a swooshing noise as they touch down. The skydiver uses the steering switches to minimize the parachute's drop as they approach the landing, enabling a gentle touchdown. The skydiver uses the steering switches to minimize the parachute's drop as they approach the landing, enabling a gentle touchdown. A skydiver about to land on a large field of grass while using an open parachute. In a controlled yet forceful maneuver known as flaring, the skydiver pulls down on both steering toggles at once to accomplish this. This movement flattens down the parachute's back, slowing down the parachute's descent. When an experienced skydiver lands, it typically involves taking a small forward step before the parachute collapses to the ground as the air rushes no longer into it. Every skydiver uses a main and a reserve parachute when they jump. The main parachute may open 999 times out of 1000 but there is always a chance that something will go wrong. This is why it is done, obviously for safety reasons. Possible causes include a user terror during packaging or an issue with the parachute itself. Generally speaking though, tandem and solo skydivers are always backup positive since they jump with two parachute systems. For seasoned skydivers, knowing how to pack a parachute is crucial. The procedure for obtaining a skydiving license includes becoming a licensed parachute packer. Parachutes for oneself and others can only be packed by trained parachute packers. The reserve parachute must be packed by an FAA certified parachute rigger because it has a slightly different and time consuming technique and has a life saving purpose. It's one thing to safely land someone from an airplane using a parachute, but what if you had to put down a whole plane in the same manner? Every time the space shuttle, a reusable spacecraft that is now gone, returned to Earth, NASA had to overcome that obstacle. The shuttle was propelled into orbit during its launch phase by a strong main engine and rocket boosters. However, when it returned, it had become nothing more than a glide that was relying on its short wings to carry it back to its starting point. The shuttle landed on its 4.5 km long landing strip at roughly 350 km per hour or 220 miles per hour, which is quicker than a standard jet flight, which typically lands at speeds closer to 240 km or 150 miles per hour. The crew deployed a horizontal parachute known as a drag chute in addition to applying the brakes once the wheels touched the ground to safely bring the craft to a stop. Before being released, it constantly contributed to reducing the shuttle speed by around 75% and was about 12 meters or 40 feet broad. Skydiving has never been safer because of innovations in parachute design, material, and technology. You'll be pleased to learn that it's among the safest sports out there. The safety records speak for themselves, and the business takes this extremely seriously, and the parachute functions like this, my lovely future skydiver. Amazing, isn't it? Now are you up for some trip up in the air with a parachute anytime soon? Let us know in the comment section down below. That's a wrap for today's video. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology, serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. See you on the next one.